Do outdoor areas need emergency lighting? A power cut hits and your building goes dark. Now you step outside, the walkway is black. Car parks, shadows, fire exits, invisible. What happens next could be the difference between calm evacuation and total chaos. Hmm, well to help me answer this question, I'm going to be using this twin spot from Ecolink. When it comes to emergency lighting, the main code of practice in the UK is BS5266-1. It tells us that if a power failure would leave any part of an escape route in the dark, including areas outside the building, then that route needs to be lit. BS7671, the wiring regulations, backs this up under regulation 560.9, requiring that emergency lighting systems need to follow BS5266. So if people exit the building but still have a way to go before they're actually safe, they need to keep that journey illuminated. Here's the key part. You don't install emergency lights just because the regs say so. You install them because a risk assessment has identified the need. A fire exit that opens into a dark service yard, a retail garden centre or a multi-level stairwell, well those are examples where emergency lighting outside is essential. So what are the kind of hazards that we need to consider if carrying out a risk assessment for external emergency lighting? Outdoor spaces may include changes in level, slippery or uneven services, temporary obstructions or areas with poor natural light. You'll also want to consider how familiar occupants are with the layout. Visitors, customers or temporary staff may be unfamiliar with escape routes, especially in larger commercial or retail environments. The goal is to ensure a clear, visible path to a place of ultimate safety. It may feel like part of the building, but if it's a space customers regularly move through, especially if it's part of the flow between indoor and outdoor sections, then it becomes relevant under emergency lighting standards. In the event of a power cut, people may have to go back inside the building to escape in an emergency. If that outdoor sales area is in darkness, it could create confusion, panic and potential injury risks. According to BS5266-1, emergency lighting must be provided along escape routes, including any parts of the building where people are expected to evacuate through. This extends to external areas if they form part of the escape strategy. More specifically, Clause 7.6.2 mentions that external escape routes should be adequately illuminated if there is no effective natural lighting or street lighting. And this is confirmed in the Electrician's Guide to Emergency Lighting on page 52 where it says that external areas in the immediate vicinity of exits to assist dispersal away from the exits to a place of safety, the illumination level being as for escape routes. In garden centres, lighting levels often differ significantly between indoor and outdoor zones. That's a problem if we're maintaining lux levels indoors along escape routes. We need to match or bridge that gap outdoors to avoid visual disorientation or trip hazards, especially around displays, uneven paving or planters. And when it comes to emergency lighting outside a building, it's easy to assume that nearby street lights will do the job, and in some cases they might. This type of background illumination is called spill lighting, light that's not part of the building's emergency system, but still helps keep emergency routes visible. But here's the catch. According to the Electrician's Guide to Emergency Lighting 3rd Edition, you can't just rely on street lighting without regular reassessment. Why? Because those lights might not always be on when your premises are occupied, especially if they're controlled by timers, sensors or local authorities. If the street lighting isn't guaranteed to operate during all hours of use, then dedicated emergency lighting must be installed instead. That's why any reliance on spill lighting should be reviewed as part of a risk assessment to make sure escape routes remain illuminated in all conditions, not just when it's convenient. When we talk about safe evacuation, it's not just about whether there's some light, it's about whether there's enough light in the right places. The Electrician's Guide to Emergency Lighting recommends a minimum illuminance on escape routes at one look at floor level measured along the center line of the route and you'll find a nice diagram of this guidance at figure 4.2 of the guide but it doesn't stop there in open areas sometimes referred to as anti-panic zones like garden centers loading bays or open plan retail spaces the recommendation is to achieve a minimum of 0.5 lux across the unobstructed floor area that's to prevent panic and ensure people can identify their surroundings and move safely towards an exit the high 
high-risk task areas, places where people may be operating machinery or working at height, even higher levels are required. But for the most external scenarios like walkways, stairs and courtyards, one looks on the path and 0.5 looks in the surrounding zones is a solid benchmark. And this is where this twin spot fitting from Ecolink really comes into its own. It's IP65 rated, robust and bright. So let's dive into it. It's non-maintained, meaning the unit will stay off during normal operation and only activates when the main power fails. It helps preserve battery life and avoids adding unnecessary light to already lit spaces. It features dual adjustable LED heads, which can be angled independently. And that is ideal for lighting both an escape route and a secondary hazard area like steps or a gate. It has a compact surface mounted design, making it easy to install above doors, loading bays or open areas without needing deep recessing or brackets. And it delivers a high lumen output, enough to meet the recommended one looks on escape routes, even from a typical 2.5 meter mounting height, which is perfect for a longer throw or wide area coverage. And Ecolink also offer a full range of emergency lighting options, whether they be weatherproof bulkheads and these recessed spots, ideal for suspended ceilings. And where signage is essential, Ecolink also offer these maintained emergency exit signs. So do you need emergency lighting outside? Well, the answer is maybe, if the risk assessment says so. And thanks for the question, Alex, your 20 quid vouchers on the way. And if you've got a question that you want me to answer, then be sure to send it to willittrip at efix.co.uk. And if we feature yours, you could win a 20 pound Amazon voucher. And be sure to check out the video I did on the range of Ecolink light fittings, one not to miss.